Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today we're releasing a new project, the ATX Breakout Board. The way it works is you take an old ATX computer power supply like this. You can find these anywhere. They're very inexpensive and most people have one sitting in the basement or ready to throw away. And you connect it to the ATX Breakout Board and it gives you a nice bench power supply with a hefty 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, and negative 12 volt power rail. There's a lot of plans on the internet for converting an old PSU into a bench power supply, but a lot of them require you to open this up and fiddle around in here, or at the very least playing with the connector and shorting some wires in here. The breakout board makes it a lot easier to recycle one of these into a bench power supply. So here's how it works. You connect the ATX connector from the power supply to the breakout board. It's a right angle connector so it comes out at an easy to deal with angle, it doesn't go straight down. When you flip on the bench supply, the mains on LED will come on. This shows that the power is connected to the supply, but it's not turned on yet. We just hit the switch, and it starts up the power supply. Once the supply is started up and working, the power good LED comes on. And you see each channel also has an indicator LED, so that you know each voltage is working and there's no short. Each power rail comes from an easy to use screw terminal that screws up, and you can put a wire under there and just clamp it down. But it also is compatible with banana clips like this, so you can plug this straight into the top of the connector and then use maybe alligator clips or whatever on the other end to get a quick source of power. To test it, we've connected up the Part Ninja. This is a 5 volt device, so we're running it off of the 5 volt rail. It's working just fine. We actually used this slightly off camera when we did the Part Ninja video a few weeks ago. This started off as a project we just wanted to use in the workshop. We needed a bench supply that would supply the different voltage rails, but we didn't want to mess around with shorting out pins on the ATX connector or opening this up and manipulating things inside. So instead we made a breakout board that takes care of all of it for us and provides a little bit of protection with some resettable fuses. Computer power supplies pack a big punch. This one has 30 amps on the 5 volt rail alone. That's enough to fry just about any project and even you. So for a modicum of protection, we put resettable polyfuses on each power rail. If there's a short, the fuse will pop, and after you remove the short, in a few seconds, it'll go back to working normally. So let's try it out. We're going to clip one end of the banana plug to the ground, and now we're just going to push this other banana clip straight into the 12 volt rail. Now that'll short it directly to ground and use way more than 1.25 amps of current. So the polyfuse will reset, and the light will go out until we remove the short, then it should come back on pretty quickly. So here goes. You can see the 12 volt rail went out. It's no longer providing power, but we didn't smoke the power supply. We didn't smoke the board. And when I remove it, in just a brief amount of time, the fuse will reset and the LED will come back on. And there you go. A modicum of protection for your projects. This is the second board besides the Bus Pirate version 3.6 that uses our new standard dangerous prototypes PCB footprints. In the past we've been a little bit laissez-faire about the placement of our holes or whether we even include them on the board, as well as things like corner keep out and, and the space that's around mounting holes and the general shape of the board. What we wanted to do was standardize on some footprints we could use for all of our stuff to make it easier to put them in cases later. So we standardized on this board shape that has round edges, consistent placement of mounting holes along with ground keep out, and edge keep out so the parts aren't pushed too close to the side, and also recommended placements for connectors and things like that. We have a whole set of footprints for these standardized boards in our parts library. We'll have more on these in a couple weeks. As a safety measure, many older computer power supplies needed a load on the 5 volt pin before they'd actually start up and stabilize. For that reason, a lot of power supply conversions include a 9 watt, 10 ohm resistor on the 5 volt pin. In our experience, most power supplies don't need that, and it just turns out being a, an unnecessary source of heat and an unnecessary waste of electricity. So on this board we've got a footprint for that resistor, but we're actually including it in a baggie separately when you order. That way you can include the resistor, solder it down if you need it, but for most people you won't need it and you can leave it off and avoid that fire hazard, avoid that source of heat, and avoid wasting electricity. The ATX specification includes an optional negative 5 volt rail. Now in our experience, no power supplies we've worked with actually have the negative 5 volts. It's completely optional and it hasn't been used in computers in uh, maybe 10 or 20 years. But sometimes you find an ancient power supply that has it, and if you want to tap that, we've brought it out to a header, but we've not included the screw terminal. Since most people won't have it, we save on shipping costs and also project costs. Well, that's it for the ATX breakout board. It's a simple project we built to use around the workshop that became a prototype you can buy at Seed Studio now. The complete tutorial should also be posted on the blog in just a couple minutes. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with a serial port interfacing tutorial.